Thanks for tuning in to 12 Bar News. This episode you're about to listen to was actually recorded a few weeks ago in the beginning of March, March 4th, I believe. So some of the information may be a little out of date, but I want you to do me a favor and see how many times Darsh says for sure. If you can give me the right answer and post it on Facebook, you win a prize to be determined later what that prize will be. But but you win a prize. Thanks for tuning in. For sure. Welcome to 12 Bar News, music show by and for music enthusiasts. I'm the Fox. I'm your host. Welcome to our inaugural podcast. Uh, I'm here with a couple friends that I've had for years uh, since high school, longer than I care to think about. Um, I have my friend over here, Badger. Yo, yo, yo. How you doing, Badger? I'm doing well. Yeah. How's that pen treating you? It's tasty, man. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. And uh, on my left, I have Darsh. Darsh, what's going on, brother? Uh, Not much, man. Just uh, stoked about the uh, the podcast here. Yeah, man, it's going to be fun. This yep. is uh, we, we have a, a loose format, you know, nothing, nothing crazy. We're not going to be, uh, we're not a news show. I know it says twelve bar news, but we're not a news show. Okay, we're we're going to have fun. Uh, that's the plan, anyway. So the topic of conversation this week: emo, emo music, uh, specifically the years two thousand to two thousand nine. Uh, we are going to be discussing mm, our favorite bands. Uh, it's the wrong way to say it. Not our favorite bands. Maybe our top the, 10. Maybe the most influential top 10 bands uh, from that genre in that era. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll be joined later by our buddy Bullwinkle. Uh, you'll you'll hear his dulcet tones very soon, hopefully. His wife dragged him along to go furniture shopping. So, mm, poor guy. Ball and chain. <laughs> Ball and chain. I am the only single one here, so suck it. <laughs> You have to drag yourself furniture shopping. I don't shop for furniture. Just I, I don't think I've ever shopped for furniture. I have a like desk. way too much furniture. That's a lot. Yeah, you it's don't. all old people, like dead people <laughs> shit too. <laughs> Nothing like dead people furniture. It's, it's haunted. You know. <laughs> and then I get their furniture. <laughs> and then you get their <laughs> furniture. <laughs> Okay. Well, that was dark. That, that was very dead. That took a dark, dark turn. Are you guys surprised? <laughs> no, not at all. And not we've at all, known Badger. each other since like middle school. I mean, I met you playing lacrosse. Uh, I was so good. You were so I good. I was you, so good, man. You That's and, why I, went, uh, I got a full scholarship. Yeah, you and Nathan. Yep. Yeah, that that big goofy bastard. We'll oh to, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to have him on here sometime. That'll yeah, be, that'll be fun. But that's not his name. It's Narfiji. Oh, it's Narfiji now. Yeah, did, did he did he change it officially? Officially, man. Oh, nice, nice. Did did he get a new social security number with that? No, it's the same one. It's just a different card with Narfiji on it. You you know what it is? Yeah. Can you can you can you tell me? It's one five eight. Shit, that's Donald Trump. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. We we don't want to give out. We... <laughs> Yeah, just it running away. <laughs> Jeff... It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Did did did, right. uh, did he leave? I I think he might have. I think he might have run away. <laughs> I'm back. Oh god, he's back. He's back in studio now, guys. Before we move on to the main event, we will be doing our weekly news segment, which on the Twelve Bar News podcast we like to refer to as What's Happening. <laughs> Uh, So in big music news right now, uh, the 25th anniversary of Warp Tour is coming up this summer. Yeah, I know. The lineup looks awesome. Yeah, I was about to say, I know, Badger, you're really excited about that lineup. So Uh, before we get into the lineup, uh, we have all been to Warp Tour uh, back in the day several, uh, several times. I know I've been in 06 and 07 I was oh four, oh five, oh six, oh seven. Did we go oh eight? I didn't go oh eight. No, I... no, no, because we were broke because we were in college. <laughs> yeah, that was broke college time. I'm still broken in college. <laughs> but it, it was really fun, you know. Um, uh, it was definitely uh, a great time, especially you know back in those days when we were yeah. in high school. It, Such it good was bands. Great. Yeah. Um, it definitely was a big exposure point for me. Um, when it came to listening to 
better music. Um, I transferred from being a almost purely metalhead into more of an alternative sound because of Warped Tour. Definitely more punk. Not only that, but bands that I sort of overlooked when I heard them live, it was incredible. Uh, Circus Survive comes to mind when I saw them play live. I they blew me away. It was so good. Yeah. And uh, now you know they're one of my favorite bands. So like. Um, and they would have like really good like weird bands that nobody really heard of, and uh, you know they would bring local bands and they would have small bands like do like internship tours and shit. It was really cool uh, for the scene. I mean, but, guys, I got to see Joan Jet at Warp Tour. Yeah, me too. Like, I was there, that's and then No Effects punk. came on that same yeah, stage. Yeah, No yeah. Effects. I yeah, also so- got kicked in the head a couple times <laughs> yeah. at Warp Tour. I you kicked know. Dan in the head. It, it was dark. Those pit. pits, uh, those were rough. And, you know, yeah, uh, you know, they weren't like the most hardcore pits uh, that are out there. But I was in a, a circle pit for the casualties and mm. my high tops, uh, my, you know, my chucks, they uh, somehow got off my feet and one of them flew Onto the stage, almost hit the dude's mohawk, um, and then I didn't have a shoe, and so I went everywhere looking, and you know, they only have one shoe company that sells shoes there? I don't know if you know, who, I, I forget what, it was a skateboarding shoe, I don't... DC's. It might have been that, but... but 80 bucks or something for a shoe. I mean, Ooh. yeah, normally people do that, but not when you're at Warp Tour. That was yeah. all my soda money because i was like 16 yeah, your soda money yeah um <laughs> i also remember the bled i got kicked in the head during the bled and motion you. city soundtrack i saw for, you yeah, for that, whatever that reason bled show i remember I, um, seeing you we i was at one warp tour i saw aiden and uh i was in the the wall of death oh i think i was in that exact we were talking about this the other day yeah um that those, was those were cool have you ever gnarly. been in one Darsh, uh, believe it or not, I think uh, less than Jake had one. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I don't really. I think they were just doing it as a joke. Yeah, but uh, that sounds right. Yeah, it, it, less than Jake's gonna be this year. At, yeah, uh, Warp Tour. And so is uh, Circus Survive. Yeah, let's yep. get into that lineup a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, some people like Three Eleven. They got some good reggae bands coming. Ska bands going. They have like uh, Three Eleven th- was an inside job. Yeah. 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 It was. <laughs> Yeah, Bush George W. Bush does not care about <laughs> three eleven. Uh, real big fish, and you got less than Jake. You got three eleven. You got the dirty heads. Um, so there's also bands like Thrice and Taking Back Sunday. We were talking before. Dan really likes Taking Back Sunday. I don't. We'll, we'll, we'll get, get into that. The, we'll get yeah. into this later. We'll, but, yeah, that'll uh, okay. be discussed later. All right. So yeah, it's gonna be a good show. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be. I'm the the price is a bit steep. Ooh, but it's also uh, two, two days, two days in one location yeah, instead which, of a tour tour. But, yeah, um, the one the one we're looking to go to is in Atlantic City versus uh, Camden, which mm-hmm. is an improvement. Uh, <laughs> no improvement. offense to the people of Camden, but uh, the walk to the venue was. And there's not much better. At, I at mean, best. <laughs> there's not much below Atlantic City. I don't know how recent you guys have been there, but yeah, it's pretty pretty disastrous. Uh, right. Well, if you stay on the boardwalk, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're good. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you, you will get the people who are like, got it, and like, uh, you're a cop. Uh, but yeah. you know, um, 25 years warp tour. That's that's. Yeah. Crazy. Wait, isn't it Vans, the skateboard company? It's Vans Dude, Warp Tour, isn't it? That, that uh, was a joke. Yeah. Oh. I was trying not I to say their get, name because I, I want them to sponsor us. I didn't get the joke. <laughs> there we go. I, wow. Vans, I'm sorry. Autism I, I love those shoes. I had them for a long time, and then I didn't. And then you didn't. Yeah. Um. Do we have anything else in news that we want to discuss? Uh, I think that is it for today. All right. That's a big one. But, uh, you know, totally stoked for that show. Uh, um, yeah. I'm probably going to go. I'm probably going to go, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are the dates of that? I, I would definitely go with Vans, who we love, 
gets us uh, free tickets and the press pass. Oh, that we would can, be great. Well, even uh, I got a portable recorder. We can do a podcast there. Come on, fans. Yeah, that would be great. Oh, um, Father John Misty, we were talking about oh, this yeah. earlier, is playing in Philadelphia. That's um, going to be a dope yeah. show. I'm, I'm going to try and go to that show. Uh, uh, you said that's coming up soon. Uh, that is June 22nd. All right. And when is Warp Tour again? Do you know the dates? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Uh, it is the Saturday, June 29th, and Sunday, the Ooh. 30th. That's going to be a nice little week there yeah. if you get yeah. to see Father John and then go to Warp Tour. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, ha- we'll definitely be trying to go to that. For sure. Uh, tickets are going fast, so we're going to have to get on it. Yeah. Yep. And there's always good punk shows in Trenton. Oh, Come yeah. On. Trenton has an up-and-coming uh, punk scene. Uh, it's and of been course, around for years. Of course, we're Philadelphia area, so we have the best punk scene in the entire country. Philadelphia and New Jersey. Yeah. <clears throat> it just, Badger. Yeah, Badger. Uh, but I, I know for a fact that uh, the Philly punk scene is still very, very active. And uh, some of the best you know, small venues that you can find in the entire country for, especially for local bands. Um, and out of that scene came like me without you. Oh yeah. Me and, without uh, you, Circus I know Survive. they're not like strictly punk, but like, yeah, they're, they're punk yeah. enough, but yeah, Cir- they definitely Circus started Survive. off hardcore. Yeah. Circus yeah. Survive for sure. Um, they're what Lansdale they're boys. Oh yeah. Um, so they're brand little, new. Uh, no, no. Uh, Are they Lansdale? I don't know. It's they're definitely like in our area. Yeah. But... They're in our area. Um, no, brand new was New York, dude. Ordeal by Innocence. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the best band in the world. Yeah. That's that's our band. I forgot to mention that at the top of the show. Oh yeah, we play some instruments. Yeah, sometimes. we we all play some instruments. This is our qualifier for talking about this music. Is that uh, not only are we, you know, fans of the music, but we we try and participate in the scene. Um, Very much so. We and, we uh, took a took a bit of a hiatus for a few years to you know people getting married and having kids and. And all that, and so uh, yeah, we're 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 back and recording again for uh, you know a, a project that we're working on. Um, yep, yep, yep. Got some stuff in the can. Still working on some stuff for sure. And uh, if we, you know, uh, if we make our recordings available, we'll definitely uh, you know tell you guys and uh, we'll link you to SoundCloud on our website, and we'll try and get that out there. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. Should we uh, get to the main event? Um, yeah, let's actually uh, do that. Is that um, next on the docket? I think that's next on the docket. So uh, we are going to be talking, like I said at the top of the show, about the 2000s emo scene. Uh, you know the bands. You, you know the My Chemical Romances right. and the used. And, and uh, you know, we know that emo has roots before that time period and and after. I actually know yeah. that there's like a, um upcoming emo movement nowadays. Yeah, um, emo rap. <laughs> and, you know, there's the little peeps of the world. <laughs> right. Um, rip. rip. Yep, rip. Um, but, you know, we're, we're focusing on that um, mid the 2000s wave of emo of, and screamo. We're yeah. counting to. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, before uh, we get into our list, should we, you know, talk about like what we think emo is? You yeah, know, I that's think a great that, idea. Uh, I'll kick things off. Yeah. I think that emo um, is very much a fluid term. So you know, uh, a lot of different bands are emo and then something else. You know, for example, My Chemical Romance and The Used have very much like a uh, sort of like a punk slash goth, goth vibe. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was very interesting. But uh, certain bands have like a psychedelic vibe, like Circus Survive has you know, um, a very different sound. Um, but all of those bands come together in to this one scene. And, uh, there's a, you know, there's a lot of arguments to be made. Like are, are the bands that we're going to be talking about technically emo? And, uh, you know, there's an argument to be made in almost every case, uh, but, you know, it's really what it means to you. 
that's kind of my take on it. I uh, I agree. You said uh, you said something that perfectly describes what emo is, and it was the scene at the time. Um, because I know for a fact that I have on my list of, of top ten emo bands band a band that you know not everybody thinks is that emo. really grinds my gears. <laughs> that's not a segment yet. Um, but so it does, man. I know it does, but it's we're my, talking it's about my list. If if no. this band was going to be they are part, <laughs> emo, they would be on. on everybody's list. Hold on, they are part of the scene. Like I said, no, my, the, no, that's defi- the whole point against no, them. They're my not. my definition, yes, they are. My definition. Who, who are you guys talking about? We'll we'll get to it. Okay, all right. Um, my definition is the scene that happened for underground well, music. That became mainstream during okay. the early to you know during the 2000s during the aughts. To almost contradict what I just said, I feel like uh, that you know just because they are part of the scene doesn't necessarily qualify them as emo. That, that doesn't like, mean they were for, in the scene. For example, Coheed and Cambria, right. they were part of the scene, but they're not emo, not at, by any stretch. No, they're progressive. Yeah, they're, uh, they're purely progressive. I know. Yeah, um, but. This band I that think, we're talking about, I think is that I from think, a different hold genre. On. I completely. think that a lot of people that hear this will agree with me that this band is. Yeah, you know, but they're wrong. It, do, it doesn't matter. Uh, Badger, would you like to start with your number ten? I didn't get my definition. Of yeah, no, in it, there. Oh, you didn't throw your definition. No, in. Yeah. no we'll my definition in. is a certain sounds of pop punk mixed with acoustic mixed with whiny and sc- some screamy but it's not like um it-, it has a certain sound to it i'm gonna say this electric crisp guitar like um reminiscent of taking back sunday brand new uh all american rejects they all have this one sound that's like palm muting and uh power chords and it's over like uh post hardcore drums and it's uh there's a certain sound that i have in mind when i think of emo and screamo well, i think that it's important to remember that emo is um rooted in punk music oh, right so right that, that should chord. definitely come into the equation i mean yeah like you said uh when we started this segment um we do know that emo has its roots much further back you can go into bands like pavement um you know like that that style the the dc hardcore scene definitely spawned the emo scene right Right. um and you can go further back uh you can look at bands like um the smiths as uh inspiration to certain bands you know that uh that became huge in this scene definitely yeah so um yeah so we are specifically talking about uh the aughts for sure uh, um as as jeff noisily prints things off in the background <laughs> very <laughs> professional yes yeah, yes it is jeff is our production manager yeah. and he is An not ass. very good at this game but <laughs> yeah. he made but us all badger is great at this game yeah yeah that guy's a pro that guy is a pro uh, um all right so now that we got that rolling and you have each of our definitions of emo i am gonna have uh badger here Start off by giving us his uh, uh, his no. honorable mentions, if you would. Uh, oh, okay. So for some bands. I think we should have twelve, and these guys are all like, no. So my number twelve, which will count as an honorable mention, is Finch, and my number eleven is Thursday. Yeah, they're both. Um, I don't want to say they're integral to this scene, but they are so huge i remember seeing thursday at warp tour and uh, they were one of the bands that kind of opened my the door for me to listening to uh different music especially um, finch yeah you know, finch, finch was great. finch really yeah. started finch everything. was part of that same um like the senses fail yeah. um and uh jersey uh, represent the uh what was that rx bands rx bandits yeah yeah and um uh, and they just had uh I saw them back at a festival that Y one hundred had. Oh, uh, the one fez? of their Fez. Oh. Yeah. And I had that hat. Rip. But that was the same year as Alkaline Trio came out with Good Morning. And um 
it, it, they were so good. It was it was awesome. I saw them a few other times too, but they just the stage presence and that screaming. They had that presence, but they just didn't make my top ten. Right, right. So, so uh, yeah. let me do my honorable mentions. Yeah. Um, I was going to also say Finch just because you know I feel like if you look at some of their albums they really started that whole uh at least in the mainstream you know they were one of the first people who or bands that i would consider emo that came into the mainstream right um second i'm gonna talk i'm gonna say uh alkaline trio just because they're a great great band um they're an amazing band i've seen them live multiple times and uh I just don't think that they're emo enough yeah. for me to that's why they didn't I- make include my list. them on my list. Yeah, they didn't make my list. They, for that they yeah. reason. you know, they were definitely part of the scene, but uh, and they're definitely worth mentioning. Definitely, um, but uh, I don't think that I can include them in my top ten just and, because. And they're... Matt Skiba had uh, Heavens, which was definitely emo, and a lot of their acoustic albums definitely fell in that and crimson definitely fell in yeah, that crimson. but overall they were much more of the punk They're pop punk. punk yeah yeah that mm-hmm. that scene and they had a lot of you know hard uh like uh from from um like damn it and all those albums god damn it yeah those guys uh they were like real punk songs i mean yeah definitely. some of them some of them were whiny yeah they but. they fall you know the inevitable show that we do focusing on punk pop punk of that era, they will be on, they'll be in my top five for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did not write any honorable mention. I did write honorable mentions, but, um, I remember. So uh, I already said one and they're, they're not in that time frame uh, necessarily. And that was the Smiths. Um, just cause, uh, it, especially with the emo, you know, short for emotional, uh, Morrissey does that. Johnny Marr uh, evokes a lot of that uh, sound with his guitar. Um, and then my other, you know, sort of honorable mention is not in the exact era, but it's Neutral Milk Hotel as far as influencing on, uh, you know, um, the bands that that then did define the aughts emo scene. You know, I was just listening to. I think it's the boy that blocked his own shot. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, that song by brand new off of uh, Deja. Deja yeah. Yeah. And there's a line where he's like talking about the pale skin that like fits over your skull. Yeah. And that I was like, that is such a uh, neutral milk hotel, like that imagery. Yeah. That's, that's a know? Jeff Magnum line for sure. For sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So th- that would be my honorable mention. Um, for as far as the influences um because my, my list was actually really easy to put together i don't know about your guys it, it was fun yeah uh, um yeah i did have a lot of fun i had some heartbreaking moments but uh, i know you did dude i know you did especially um, when people mentions them who shall not be named i think that podcast. badger had the the hardest time yeah. of it and yeah. it was my idea. Yeah. Yeah. Badger did have a hard time with this one. So it, it, I'm still having a little hard time with <laughs> one of Pat's and I, one of Bull. I don't know who Pat is. Oh, um, Pat's not on the show. It's um, the Fox, dude. Come on. Okay. The Fox. Um, so in, in, in lieu of Jeff having such a hard time, we're going to let him actually kick off the top 10. Well, his, his we're going to do our number 10 place and go around. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. so, uh, Badger, uh, throw us your top your 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 number ten. My number ten is from first to last. Okay. Ooh. Uh, why did you put from first to last at number ten? Because I think they were. Uh, they part he of means the, he means him. I mean Sonny, but I mean the whole bands. I think they were like a big part of the later scene, like after the used hit big. But when they were starting, like, I know they were around before, but um, they had that same sound, but they gave a harder, more uh, hardcore tone to it. And, like, their writing style was so cool. Like, the uh, Ride the Wings of Pestilence. Right. That's uh, a great song. 
like uh, a lot off of that album. Yeah, that's it. But yeah. the ones before that, they were okay. Sonny really made it for me, and uh, plus he's Skrillex. Yeah, for, <laughs> for those who don't know, Sonny Moore is Skrillex, and he was the singer at, I think he was about 16 when he joined from first to last. So um, my thoughts yeah. on And he from still first, sounds like it. My thoughts on from first <laughs> to like last it. are that, you know, they're definitely really emo. Um, <laughs> their songs are just a little bit too structureless for me to enjoy that's a personal preference okay but, you know i re- i respect Emily. i respect your 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 choice yeah that's a good number 10 ben um definitely darsh your number 10 okay my number 10 is uh say anything um yes it is say anything and uh i was just listening to uh is a real boy mm. and uh i was just like Wow, this album is very good for one, uh, and I just can't get over the crazy energy that the lead singer has. I I don't I forget his name. Um, geez, uh, his name is uh, Max Max Bemis. Yeah, but, yeah, and, yeah. And his uh his story is really interesting. If you look into you yeah. know what that guy went through specifically uh, while recording that album. But uh, yeah. you know, there's songs like Whoa and um uh through a vector like those songs are so good yeah um that album is probably in my top 10 albums of all time yeah um, and they're definitely on my list yeah they made my list too and uh i forget um, if bullwinkle he had some weird ones uh yeah well when he comes on eventually uh we'll get him we'll, to we'll post his, his up in the in the comment section on the youtube right <laughs> um but yeah uh say anything they're they are my in my top 10 slot i uh i i like uh like the positioning that's fine with me um but for my number 10 uh i went with death cab for cutie um interesting yeah i uh i love death cab um they are a great band uh ben is a great singer songwriter uh he's very talented guy yeah um you know uh and, and you know, to a to a greater extent, uh, the postal service. So, so it's really number ten is is uh, is Ben Gibbard himself, because um, even his solo stuff is kind of uh, emo. He he for me defines a lot of what the uh, the emo scene, yeah, um, you know, means. Yeah, uh, I agree. And uh, he's there. He, them, them. There, all of the pronouns are in my list, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely the Connor Oberst of emo. He, um, uh, but he can sit. I think sing a Connor little bit Oberst different. is the Connor Oberst no. of emo, bro. No, we'll no. We'll, we'll talk right. about that in a yeah. bit. That okay. Number nine, Badger. N- number nine, Badger. Number nine, Under Oath. Okay. Uh, I'd also like to say that my number nine slot is also Under Oath. Yeah, they feel like a nine. So. The reason that I'm putting them so low, I actually really love Under Oath, um, is because are they very emo? No. Uh, really only... Uh, the drummer. Well, <laughs> Aaron, I was going to say... Less re- than Jake made Aaron cry and quit Warp Tour. <laughs> I was really going to say... And then um, he became the almost. They're... Uh, Almost the they're only chasing safety. Is that the name of the album? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I feel like that it was um, definitely their introduction into the emo scene. Yeah. But uh, that's really the only album I would uh, consider to be like screamo. Yeah. Anything after that, they went much more metal course. And for sure, they yeah. were definitely like the hardest thing at that, like in the emo. Yeah, like at least that I was really listening to. They were like borderline had some Norma Jean like moments and oh, like hardcore yeah. style. And when Define the Great Line came out, that album is incredible. incredible. Uh, and it really, um, they kind of stopped with their. Uh, it, it became a lot heavier. Mm-hmm. It became a lot more metalcore centric. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Under Oath, great so, band. Und- but, Under Oath barely didn't make my list yeah i didn't give my reason why they're on yeah why did they make your list for most of the same reasons as uh darsh over here but um they were just they beat out 
a lot of bands that uh, I listen to more, but I just feel like they they had the a strong place in the scene and in that whole taste of chaos uh, mm. and know, environment. Tour. Yeah, and yeah. Warped Tour, but the the taste of chaos was all the like the really screamo. Yeah, um, they were like the the used like, I, you know. Yeah, I do know. All right. Um, my number nine is uh, Bayside. Um, now Bayside for me, uh, I've seen them live like three or four times. Um, always put on a good show. Um, yep. Like every single time they, I've never seen them live. I they I heard that they're really good, amazing. Live. I saw them at that same Warp tour as Joan Jett and yeah. No Effects yeah, in that's Camden. What, that was the first time I saw them. Yeah, um, killer. Yeah, killer show. Um, they they're almost they <laughs> they almost went higher on my list. Um, they did go higher on my list. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I they just kind of fell to number nine for me when you look at the bands I put before them, I think you'd understand why they fell. Yeah. Some of them. Um, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, but they, they had a much, uh, heavier sound, uh, without the screaming, um, because they, they, I don't know if you guys knew, knew this, but they played in C, uh, drop C. Um, for sure. So, yeah, so, the guitar uh, playing's killer. I, yeah. I can hear it. I didn't know that. But, yeah, uh, they once you, you once you know that you're like, oh, of course they did. <laughs> the other thing that I want to bring up about Bayside because they're also on my list is that um, they were so emo. Yeah, they like were very th- emo. their lyrics were very emo. Yeah, uh, um, and they never really stopped doing that either. No, no, the uh, songwriting still they're did, still putting out albums. Did you guys hear their new? Uh, they put out a Bayside Acoustic too. Yeah, it was so good. Have you guys it's, listened? To my it? my little brother, who is a huge fan of Bayside, yeah, uh, introduced it. To is me. he part of the cult? <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, he. Uh, did he get a little bird tattoo? He's got yet? his membership. I know he's got uh, his several items of merch. <laughs> um, I don't know if he has a tattoo. He might. Uh, I know he has a tattoo. I, I for, that my parents disapprove of. Oh, but uh, I, uh, I, I, can I guess what it is? N- no, <laughs> not on not on the podcast. <laughs> Later, is um, it okay? But uh, all right, what are we on? Uh, number right, eight. Uh, Badger, go to your number eight, please. My number eight is say anything for the reasons we said before, but also, um, they just. I really, really like them. Uh, I saw them live a couple times, and they put on a good show. But also, the um, their new albums are really good too. I, I don't know if you heard. I I know the Hebrew one that mm. was really good. Yeah, yeah. and um, they're still they're still rocking out. But that um, <sighs> Jeff, turn off that printer, newbies. We need to fire that. Guy. Yeah, yeah, he, he sucks. <sighs> Keep okay, Keep so going. yeah, Say that's anything. all. I I seed my time, but they're just they're still rocking it and keep it up. All right, um, Darsh number eight is thrice, um, and also a band. It's a lot uh, like my placement of Under Oath. Uh, thrice is a band that I love. You know, their music uh, is very you know uh versatile like on every album they do something new um but uh you know they're just not emo enough to be higher on the list um and i you know when that scene was happening at that time period they were my favorite band i remember yeah i i was really into them uh, the um, artist in the ambulance is one of the best albums uh, as far as an introduction album to a band that exists. well, that wasn't their first album. No, but, but um, for me, that was it, the it first was their album introduction to the scene. Definitely. But uh, their album after that, Visu, Visu? oh my god, oh, it's so good, dude. Yeah, um, and their later work is great too. The uh, Alchemy Index is an yeah. amazing quadruple album. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, check that out if you haven't. Their more recent uh, albums are also great. Uh, I, D- Dustin Kensher is one of the best singers I've ever heard in definitely my life disagree um, so if i haven't been more of a thrice fanboy 
Um, if I haven't conveyed that, then I'm a total Thrice fanboy. So. Yeah, yeah, but I know very well that you're yeah. a total Thrice fanboy. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, my number eight is Circa Survive. Um, now the reason they fell so low on my list um, is probably because I I don't think of them as. You're a terrible person. That's why. Is, is, I don't think They're of not... them as emo enough. Again, this no, is what it comes uh, down to. Jeterna let me and on letting let go. Let me are... okay. get all my right, point right. out. All right. Bastard. Uh... Um, they're not emo enough for me. Um, and number two is. And I think that uh, they're the, the the second most emo band that I have on my list. That's why they're number two. Um, so uh, yeah, Circus Survive is. Uh, I'm much in the. Uh, the way of thinking as Darsh is when it comes to Circus Survive, when we uh, mentioned them earlier, they put on a live show like I've never seen. Uh, Anthony Green has so much energy on stage. Yeah, that, definitely. Um, he's he it, as far as uh, pure front man goes in the on like any of our lists. I think he's probably the best pure front man. He doesn't play an instrument. He's just up there with a microphone. Killing it. Not, Maybe not just in Circus Survive, but in his earlier work oh, with like Seosin Seosin. Yeah. and the Sounds of Animals Fighting. Well, the like, Sounds of Animals Fighting is probably the best progressive rock band that's come out in that, the last years. I don't know about years. that, but dude, they're, uh, they're uh, really good. Hold on. Uh, but, progressive uh, rock, no. Art rock, yes. Let, let, let's keep it rolling. Yeah, let's yeah, keep on rolling. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say Circus Survive did not make my list. I do like a lot of their albums. But uh, they just didn't make the cut. Dude, Juturna is one of the best albums of all time. I and, said they have some so good is, albums. Um, uh, what's the album after? On Letting called? Go. Yeah, On Letting Go. On yeah. Letting Go Yeah, is, that's a good one. Uh, that was during a, a heavy drug use uh, period of my life. Um, so uh, it's it's wrapped up in a lot of good feelings. But I've listened to it recently. And uh, I realized that it, it it's the album itself. That was the good feeling, not the drugs at the time, which is uh, a hopeful feeling for me, uh, yeah. for sure. I was like, oh, shit, this is still just as good as I thought it was. It's very deep. Yeah. Do you, um, need, do you need a tissue? Yeah, I might start crying over here. <laughs> I, um, we should have got some more. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this let's, uh, let's move on to the to next one we're going. <laughs> <laughs> it's not emo. Anyways. Okay. Uh, we are on to number seven. All right. I'm really proud of my number seven. It's a little bit controversial, but in then... your eyes, it's controversial. I don't give a damn either way. Yeah. Well, I think there should have been higher up, but Vendetta Red. I can't. Oh. I didn't really listen to Vendetta Red. I don't think that's a controversial choice. Uh, I will say that. They, they like their it. lyrics are so violent that like, <laughs> dude, it, 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 it sort of becomes like shock rock. You know what I mean? Like, I saw uh, them at that same Warp Tour as Finch. No, it was uh, the Fez with uh, Finch and um, uh, Alkaline Trio, and they went on, and he was so crazy and so wild. It just like it, it opens up like uh, basically emo music for me in general because. Like I liked Finch and stuff, but I didn't like um, a lot of like the more poppy stuff because I was all I'm punk, I'm punk, <laughs> and I was like, if it's not punk, nah. You're still like that. Uh, no, <laughs> but um, then I saw them, and he was so crazy. He was up there. He's like, don't try the brown acid, and like he was freaking out, and his hair was all crazy. He was screaming about like killing people and like. It, but his voice is killer. He has that oh, scream. Yeah. yeah, that scream is uh, off their first album. It was so so good. His voice is incredible. Yeah, I, I will yeah. give you that. It's and super good. That second one was a concept album, and uh, it was about like this crazy cult, and like they got into like all this. It was like abuse and shit, and so it was really dark. But over this beautiful like voice, and then this killer cut scream. It was good. yeah. That's good. I, I see my time to right, the speaker. Darsh, number seven for you. Uh, number seven for me is the Postal Service. And, um, you know, Death Cab for Cutie, I definitely thought about putting them on the list. But um, if we're talking about just emo and, like, what you can do with emo, um, 
the album that they put out really pushed it to the limit. Like no one was really, really mixing um, emo music with like electronic music. Uh, You know, there are some bands that were like keyboard heavy, um, but like, uh, like, like hello goodbye. And they were motion city soundtrack. Um, but like they did it way better. They they elevated it to a new level and for sure. They did it in like a classy, not mm-hmm. like I really like Motion City soundtrack synth, but it wasn't the um like true like electronica kind of like sounds that right. the um, MIDI and all the stuff that the uh, collaborators brought. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was cool that it was all through like the mail. So. They weren't like how you guys are sitting next to me and I can smell when Fox farts. It was like when Beg Gibbard farts. I mean, where are you going with this? Yeah, I'm I just to I'm, I I have to think about that. I'll so, get back to you. He's worried yeah, vomiting a little bit. The the last thing I want to say is that Ben Gibbard's voice has never been so good as it was on that album. Yeah. Um. I can to- like I, I had them on my album. The um, only reason I didn't place them higher is because they only put out that one yeah, album the, and, yeah. a, and a couple of singles. So like that's the only reason they're they're not higher because that makes sense. Did yeah. you guys uh, know fill in that trivia question I gave you? What what part did Ben Gibbard cover in that Traveling Wilbury song? Uh, no, I forgot that you did that. <sighs> I, I tend to ignore slackers. I can, <laughs> I tend to ignore like ninety percent of the things you say. If we don't, we would so go insane. Yeah, we would lose our shit. I um, I talk a lot. Yeah, obviously. Um, so number, and I have ADD. Number seven on my list um, is the used. Um, <laughs> now that one was obviously going to make just about everybody's list. Um, I'm surprised it's so low. Yeah, I uh, the thing is, I love the used. Um, the fantastic band Bert is a you know, a singular character in a scene. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's very when when Bert McCracken is singing, and plus his his name just cracks me up every time. If only it was Phil. Um, so uh, yeah, Bert is such a singular type of character in a scene that uh, he was definitely going to make my list. That being said, I am not as big of a fan of the used as everybody else in the band. You're allowed to be wrong. Yeah. I mean, it's bird okay. is my homeboy. Yeah. Uh, bird. Like I said, bird is awesome. He's a great, another I great front man. I bet you did. And um, he's a, he's a lovely guy from, from what I've heard, but the reason they made it so low is that he dated, uh, Kelly Osborne. That's the <laughs> whole reason he made it well, so low on my list. <laughs> a lot of great, uh, used songs are about her from what I understand. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Um, but th- th- that being said, they, they're still, um, now we're going to get all that hate from all the, yeah, there's still fans. Yeah, hold on, there's still, have uh, you, have you seen a picture of, uh, Kelly Osborne recently? Yeah. She, she look looks good? great. Yeah. Dude. She yeah, like she... lost all sorts of weight and, uh, she's like taking care of herself. Um, Ke- when do we get a dog? Sharon, Ke- when do we get a dog? When do we get a dog? <laughs> I didn't know Ozzy Osbourne lived in Jersey. Um, but yeah, so the used uh, comes in at number seven for me, just because um, I wasn't as into the gothic emo um, side of the emo scene as uh, some of my contemporaries here are. Um. So, uh, Badger, you're number uh, six there. Senses fail. Good choice. Yeah, so I picked this band on... I had to have them on my list because they uh, uh, they just stood out um, for me back in the day with the storytelling of some of their songs. Like, uh, you know... Um, off of the like um same album as like rum is for drinking let it unfold you yeah yeah and um, um this captain goes down with the sh- yeah. Yeah. yeah that song uh, man yeah. i mean they definitely had a lot of um classic songs i guess and, but but live they were so good i mean other than he peed his pants that one time <laughs> well, i saw him they are good live I, the reason i didn't put them on my list is just i don't think that the um production on their albums is as crisp or you know a- as good as some of 
the other emo bands that were in the scene. And well, I think I think that hurt I think that hurt their sound overall. Um they they definitely were um sufferers of the loudness war as yeah. the engineers call it. But basically all the music is compressed and overloaded so loud it only sounds good when you play it loud. And like so when you play it on the normal, like compared to other bands, you lose out on all that like depth and uh the richness of the sound. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so YouTube is trying to fight that now. Um yeah, with the yeah. uh volume normalization. And that. uh it's it should be good for for recording people like, That's like good me. To hear. But uh and and for us as a band, because we, we have that live sound that it just gets lost when you're um if you have to compress everything so loud that you know it it sounds good on the radio and it's loud enough that it doesn't get drowned out by when uh you know all the other Bieber fans out there are uh, you know <laughs> Bieber fever yeah um yeah no senses fail didn't make my list um for you know no specific reason because Buddy is a great songwriter um great lyricist uh for sure this captain goes down with the ship all hands on deck stand hip to hip like dude could turn a phrase um that being said I only liked two of their albums uh the first one i actually got accidentally um i don't know if this is showing my age but the uh in the age of cds um they had mail order cd catalogs and my mom actually actually uh ordered a janice joplin cd and got sent that instead and she just gave it to me was that let it unfold you yeah let it unfold you huh. and um yeah so i accidentally found census fail and uh they were was your mom like this isn't janice no yeah she she just looked at the album and was like uh this is, i'll give this to pat like yeah uh he'll like that um and uh yeah, so my first uh, exposure to Senses Fail was completely accidental, and I enjoyed the crap out of it, and uh, she hated it. <laughs> yeah? She didn't like all that screaming crap, as she refers to it, um, uh, which, made like, me, which made me listen to it more. <laughs> I played, um, do, do you guys remember that band, uh, Qantas Never Crashed? No. no. They, uh, that would hardcore be... punk band, uh, I played it for my grandparents. Yeah, did they like it? I, I want to say... Did your grandfather say they should shoot whoever wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like he did back in the NOM. Um, all right, we're, we're going to continue moving on here to uh, number six. For me. Um, for so Darsh. my number six is uh, Bayside. And, you know, I think we've pretty much covered everything we need to cover for them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, great band. Uh, super emo. Super goth. You know, uh, some great lyrics and song themes. You know, they're great. Yep. All right. And now my number six is uh, it's going with the same theme as the used. Um, uh, while I do love this band, I like this band more than the used is uh, My Chemical Romance. Um, I know that I just got a dirty look uh, from across the deaths. Uh, the Badger desk from here Badger. likes likes. Uh, the my one che- album, My Chemical Romance, is um, a fantastic band. Um, I mean, Gerard is uh, an amazing artist in general. Um, whether it's comic books, whether it's writing lyrics for you know the band, um, the dude's creative and uh, he writes great. Uh, it's what it is is pop lyrics. Um, I'm not okay was uh, the first song I That's heard a great by them, song. and it's fantastic. That and Helena. Um, I actually watched them perform Helena on TRL. Uh, my age is showing again. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> uh, a lot of you kids out there won't know what Total Request Live was. I was thinking about that show earlier today. That was an awful show. Um, who didn't turn off their phone? Jeff. 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 You're fired. God, our fucking production manners garbage um, um i have a lot to say about my chemical romance and uh, they're later on my list so i'm yeah. gonna hold my comments yeah i was so gonna say i see them on your list here so, i uh, do have one bit more comment that i think they're a great bands they just did not make my list but by great bands i think three cheers for sweet revenge was a great album and then 
you, you weren't once, a fan. You weren't once, a fan of their. Let, let, once the breakup it. between him and Bert happens, oh yeah, it once, just. Mm. I was on Team Bert, and oh god, Jesus. Uh, um, so you're not a, you're not as big of a fan of like their Queen era. Let let let's let's yeah, we'll, we'll save that for when I, I'm like really them. holding back, so, yeah. and I want to save it. Please so. please, please yeah. do save. Um, so we're gonna move on to number five for uh, Badger. But this is the used for me. Uh, so for the, all the reasons above, but they were my favorite band for a long time. I mm-hmm. was like super, super into them. We remember. And uh, um, do the last. Our, our band covered Taste of Ink and just they uh, I liked most of their albums. I, I haven't heard the new one that much, but it was still pretty good. Uh, Bullwinkle showed me. Last time I was out visiting in the cornfields, um, <laughs> he didn't. He didn't listen to Slipknot with you while, while you went out uh, there. What? What's going on, dude? I <laughs> literally listened to Slipknot for like the second time in my life last night, and I don't know why. I think it's Jaw. He's doing something here. Uh, bless him. Uh, <laughs> praise him. But bless up. I, that's weird. Yeah. I, I don't. That's Slip, so weird. I, I do is- not like. Slipknot's cool. Please don't shoot me, crazy clown guy. But oh, that's why. Because there was a story about him uh, changing his mask, some, and it's weird. Okay. I don't, I don't know. All right, I seed my time, but the used are better than My Chemical Romance, and that's it. Opinions. All right. Uh, <laughs> Fact. We're gonna move. On, we're gonna move on to uh, Herbsy's uh, number five. Tars. Oh, um, yeah. So my He's got many nicknames. <laughs> my number five choice is a Motion City soundtrack, and um, you know they stand out to me because of all the bands in the scene. They were like the fun band. You know what I mean? Like they they didn't take themselves very seriously, but at the same time, you know they were like really pulling off these great hooks and sounds that no one else really sounded like you know uh the song capital h really yeah. sticks out to me yeah. um as sort of like a you know quirky like fun kind of thing but I, then when they got really emo it was also really cool like um they're for their uh i am the movie and mm. the the album after that uh, i was just listening to it and i can't remember what it's called but those Two albums are are very commit good. this to memory. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good album. I think I think you describe them perfectly with one word, and that's quirky. Yeah, they are very quirky. And but they Justin's didn't make hair. my list because I think of them more as like a uh, pop rock punk, like pop punk uh, mixed with like more of like um, a Jimmy Eat World type of bands rather than. But I I wasn't better too than Jimmy much. Eat World. Well, yeah, but I wasn't too much into the commit this memory. Like I didn't listen uh, that much. But I am the movie. Just it had that more positive. Um, but commit this feeling. to memory the had whole... like let's get fucked up and die. Yeah, oh, so, that's a good song. So yeah. Com- the thing about it is, is that I think why they made it so high on your list is that they disguised all that with happy sounds. Right. And, oh, but right. The, the lyrics were just some of the, like, that dude was oh, sad. That, <laughs> right. He talked about his like chemical imbalance and yeah, stuff like he's that. All, yeah. He's all fucked up. Yeah. That, I remember. But he's a, a he's a g- good song. I think his name's Justin. Um, uh, Justin yeah. Pierre. I yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. Can, they're Canadian, aren't they? Solo thing. Hmm? Are they out. Canadian? I have no idea. But Sounds um, Canadian. Another, Sounds Canadian. another standout is the track that's like, I like the universe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, off Commit This to Memory. Great, great band. They didn't make my list, but... Uh, They're American from Minneapolis. Uh, that's oh. really close to Canada. <laughs> like, um, that's really close. Are you just saying that because his last name's Pierre? No. And he's quirky? Well, I mean, that's pretty Canadian. Is he very apologetic? And if, and, and if you have a problem with that, you have a problem with me. Anyways... Um, what number were we on? I Five? I do have a problem with you, but that's not. Yeah, that's. I know it's because of a band that's on my list. He uh, who should not be named on the emo list. Anyway, right. um, so your number. My five. number five is Taking Back Sunday. Woo! Um, now we had a little discussion before we started recording. Um, so this this should be a good one. Uh, right. Should we play for, the clip? Um, no, we are not playing the <sighs> clip. So 
I think. Let, hold on. Let me. Let me. All right. So yeah, take yeah. It, taking back Sunday was one of the first bands that um, I found myself um, after you know this whole senses fail thing with the, the let it enfold you uh, randomly showing up at my house um, because it came with a uh, I don't remember the the label uh, right now. Uh, victory victory records oh right um i had that and uh and so i started like researching bands on that same label and taking yeah. back sunday was one of the bands and um did they give that out warp tour yes um i, I think, think they was, did yeah and uh actually the reason i went to my first warp tour was to see taking back sunday and i saw i ended up seeing some uh avenge sevenfold some really like out there bands that i uh ended up liking for a long time um, but taking back Sunday, no uh, comment cracks my <laughs> it cracks my top five. Um, oh yeah, Darsh liked Avenge a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. I I was totally into Avenge. Yeah, we, we right. were we were metalheads right. Yeah. Right. Uh, for a while there. Yeah, but uh, our first our I first band was they were was like a almost band. in the scene. Yeah, yeah they were like, close. They, they were they were um, just look wise. Yeah. Uh, the, their look was very influential. Well, to the and that that album, uh, but, but Waking Waking the Fallen. Hold on, we're we're digressing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they is, they were kind of in the same no, vein this, as like. Um, I just said we're digressing a little bit. We're not discussing Avenged Sevenfold. This is Kill Switch emo. Engage. No emo show. They they were just stop like talking that. about metal. I'm going to <laughs> rein you in right now. Um, I'm talking about Taking Back Sunday right now. Best metal band is Rage. Okay, yes, I agree with that, but um. So Taking Back Sunday for me, uh, they are one of the quintessential bands when you're talking about this scene. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you uh, like their music or not, or whether you agree with, you know, their their songwriting choices and and whatnot, they uh, defined uh, almost they they were one of the bands that defined a generation of music. Um, I tell uh, tell all your friends. Uh, I remember seeing the video for your so last summer and laughing so hard when Flavor Flav like yeah. jumps up on the stage and is singing with uh, them. That was so good. I watched that video. I must watched have been like yeah, I watched, millions of times. I, I just know. watched it the other day. I was yeah. loving it. Um, I haven't watched it since I was it, like like fourteen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really young. But uh, yeah, I mean that that album and then um, oh, what is the set, the next album? The Make Damn Sure. Uh, no, it's um. So no, it's that... tell all your friends, and then there was the one with the decade under the influence, and um, I can't remember what the hell it's called right now. And oh, louder uh, now. Yeah, louder now. That no, was no. the one with make damn sure. No, not louder now. It's the one right where you want to be. That where was a be. great album. Yeah, that that the album. Decade, yeah, uh, was one of the best sophomore albums that has has ever come out, and it's weird because uh, John Nolan, um, who was uh. The, the lead guitar player left the band in between right. uh, tell all your friends and that and they uh i don't remember the guy's name that they got to replace him but he was a great replacement and, and he fixed the or he was also a vocalist yes and so, uh yeah the so it added a whole nother yeah um it like it brought out because he had like a stronger scream yes so his and it they um, definitely made my list too and uh we'll talk about it a little bit more then but yeah we'll uh in fact we'll let um We'll let Darsh save his argument for when Jeff gives his uh -huh. uh, taking back Sunday position. Uh huh. Um, yeah, yeah. Wait, that, uh -huh, we're giving that Jeff. Bottom. He's back there messing with that printer still. Stop printing, Jeff. Anyways, <sighs> um, we are gonna we are gonna move on to uh, back in your closet. <laughs> we we are gonna push push forward a little bit. Yeah. Um, All right, I have major to, ADD. Uh, what number are we on? Number we're on four. number four from Badger. All right. Bayside. End of discussion. Yeah. Yeah. We we pretty great. much said everything about they made <clears throat> they made all of our lists. So I think a lot of these coming up are bands we already talked about from other people's lists. Yeah. And then there's this one that's gonna really really grind my gears. Yeah. And we I will <laughs> let you I will let you get your two words in about I have, that. When I have more than two just words. Two. two words. You have two words that you're allowed to say. And choose, I know, yeah, you can say them now too if you want to. Choose wisely. Yeah, choose wisely. You have two words right, when so when it comes down. My number four is uh, Circus Survive, and uh, this band probably would have been higher on my list. Um, but you know, it's the number four slot. Um, number three, two, and one are all like huge emo acts. So I, I definitely 
you know, wanted to um, take their relevance in the scene uh, into account. Um, and, you know, the, we, we sort of talked about it earlier. They're uh, amazing performers. Um, J- uh, Jaterna, I think I'm saying that yeah, right, it's it is, is a great album. Um, on letting go is actually i favor that album a little bit just because like it's produced so well and the guitar work is so good and it's so psychedelic there's yet a, like there's not a solid bad, there's you not know? a bad song on and that album again right. the fo- the front man i mean anthony is right yeah i mean he is one of the most distinct voices that i've ever heard in my that's life that's why sure. i could stand his first solo album but Avalon, I only could stand it like the one time, but it, it was trance music too, which I really liked. Yeah, but that was, I think, lingering from uh, never mind some some trips, other stuff. Yeah, the um, sounds of animals fighting. I want to go visit them, dude. The sounds of animals fighting. Is I took a trip to go see them, one of the best ones. <laughs> um but yeah wild. but um, yes, yeah, circuit no, you cannot go four. wrong with putting circle on your yeah. list at all. Um for all the reasons I, I know that uh darsh and i went and saw them and coheed and cambria and uh the one problem i had with that show is i know the same problem you had with that show and that's that circus survival only played for like 45 minutes well and coheed played for like four hours but dude. yeah they had to tell the whole story i know and coheed is great um yeah yes. but like they'll be I, on they'll I be on a different list they would be on my list if this They're... was not the emo list and so would number two from fox um yeah. All right. So we are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to discuss uh, my number two because All right. uh, I have Badger's, my two words. Badger's going to spaz out. What's your number uh, four? My number four is Thrice. Um, no, I put them up this high because of Dustin Kenshore specifically. Um, he, like I said, when uh, when Darsh mentioned them, um, he is one of my favorite singers of all time. As a man with a lower voice, um, I can sing. Uh, Dustin Kenshore songs right and it's like uh, he sings them so melodically and uh, everything very about beautifully. him is, is yeah. just smooth um, live they were great live too uh, fantastic live yeah band. and then uh, you know they're uh, not afraid to experiment either oh yeah we, as we as we said um, once you get beyond the artist in the ambulance like they they pivot right really hard I and just want to say one thing about thrice mm-hmm. I have no comment other than I'm stealing somebody's cigarettes because they stole like my whole pack and it's in their ashtray now. That's fine. I think it's that Jeff guy. Yeah, it might be that Jeff Douche guy. Bag. He's such an ass. Get um, back in your closet. Yeah, so number four was, was definitely thrice for me. And uh, they made it so high on my list because I, I think I got a little personal uh, when it gets to this high up on my list. And, um, and they're... I remember uh, Darsh's and, uh, and mine's first band. Um, we tried to cover the song Silhouette, but I have a, I can't scream. Animus? Animus, yeah, our first band. Uh, I have a terrible scream. and, I, and uh, They they were the rival band from mine and Bullwinkle bands. Before, and, yeah. yeah. Before um, we merged. Before we yeah. merged. Before we merged. Band. In the better pieces, mer- no. All the people in Animus were good, and all the people in Spaz were good. Yeah. Uh, except for Jeff. Yep. Anyway, uh, we're going to move into the big, big part of the main event, and that is the top three. Woo! Woo! The top of the list. The, the top, top of the list. The so- cream will rise to the top. Or as Macho Man said, the cream will rise to the top. Yeah. All right, Badger, so, give me your number three. So my number three, I kind of broke the rules because I I just play that way. So I put Death Cab for Cutie and the Postal Service as number three, and I don't care what you guys think because <laughs> number two on his list doesn't count. And that's so number just, three on but, yours doesn't. No, no, they're both of them count. Um, yeah, I don't know how Bullwinkle using... did the score, but. Somehow it counted, but for all the reasons that we said before, yeah, and more, I and I'm not going to ramble about this. But I can't fight you on Death Cab or Postal Service or Postal, or and then and like Beth I Gerber, said, his yeah. um Ben is just amazing, yeah. and and he uh, 
yeah he was he was in that song uh, yeah yeah um handle me do, with care do do yourself a favor and look up that cover what was the it's uh jenny lewis and the yeah and i th- think we missed out she had a big influence too with rilo kylie oh definitely and, uh, rilo kylie is uh they had a big from the indie folk side of emo definitely that some bands just were on the other side of they, they weren't really um, on this side so uh yeah i mean the you you can stop with the subtextual shit um, we'll get to it in a minute. Oh my! Um, <laughs> That's a hint. <laughs> Darsh, your number three. So my number three is uh, the used, and um, the used. You know, their first two albums were out of this world good. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. you know, I I still can't decide which one I like better. Um, the you know their self titled had um, some amazing tracks. Uh. Some deep cuts, which I really enjoy. Right, um, yeah. Right. I mean, like, there's always like the taste of ink, which right. everybody knows. And blue and yellow. And, is yeah. big and buried, al- buried alive. Uh, and, but like, you know, there's songs Wait, like. what? Uh, buried alive. Wait. Well, you know what song I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Right? yeah, the, yeah. the video, he's like in a coffin, you know. Right. Uh, on my own. Uh, on my own is also a great song. Yeah. Um, and then po- yeah, the poetic, poetic tragedy. Yeah, is yeah also that really... voice in that one is so uh, strong. It, and it's so good. He can hit um, that high pitch. And I think this kind of pushes. Wasn't that a, a Feldman production? I think so. Um, no, that John was uh, that no. was in Love and Death. Oh, uh, yeah. I, but he had a big um, a big impact on that for the in Love and Death. But also uh, he got Bert to sing in a lot of like. Um, like some of his Goldfinger, right. and then also other bands that you wouldn't think of, he just added because Bert's voice was that good. Yeah, yeah he is. He is, is that good. That good. In, in Love and Death is also really, really good. Yeah, um, can't, can't even argue with any like. Your it's positioning. probably more consistent. Uh, at, you know, probably. Well, the self titles their first, uh, f- like full length album. Yeah. correct. Yeah, um, right, right. So yeah, but it makes like, sense. They're usually you get that sophomore flop, but they just got stronger. Uh, and like, uh, my favorite song on that album is uh, "Light with a Sharpened Edge." Ooh, that song is so good. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. And, and I I try and sing it in my car all the time, and I can never do it right. No, but uh, like, you like, know. like I said when I talked about the use on my list, Bert is a singular figure. And the yeah. the even the the Lies Through Liars album. Yeah, that that was one of the later ones. I like that a lot. But um, yeah, amazing band. Yeah. Right. All right, uh, so on to my number three. I put Say Anything at number three um, because is a, is a Real Boy and Was a Real Boy um, are, I mean, that's my, like, it's in my top ten albums of all time. Right. Um, this includes every uh-huh. genre. Um, yeah. Max Bemis, to me, because he recorded everything but the drums himself. Um, he was the only Did person he? playing on the album. He's the only one. Really? Uh, there was a couple solos that. that were contributed from other people, but he played damn near everything, wrote all the music, um, wrote all the lyrics. Um, and when when somebody can do that, I am so impressed uh, with the level of concentration alone that it takes to do something like that. That That's why they made it so high on my list. They're super talented. Uh, like Darsh was saying earlier, like the some of the songs on Is A Real Boy... Um, whoa um, i want to know yeah. your plans i want to know your plans I, I, oh yeah when when it gets into was a real boy and you you get um like molly um uh, molly is on is, a real is boy. it is it on the first yeah. one okay um but like yeah because of you i won't ever have rough sex with molly <laughs> yeah like again like that shit just i laughed so hard instant and i was in classic. high school instant yeah. classic right me. um so that's why they made it to my number three uh, position and and like I said with uh, the top five like I kind of got like a little sentimental and, and and pushed some bands that maybe should have fallen lower on my list into uh, into the top spots because of it uh, so we're going to continue on uh, Badger you're number two uh, this is where brand new lies on my list and that is because they are so uh quintessential they're just everything emo their uh first two albums were i would have to say some of the top of my any genre 
Um, they also uh, inspired me as a guitar player. Not that I play anything like them, but it's just like uh, opens up my eyes to some of uh, you know new new kinds of things you can do in the punk scheme because those were really pop punk, especially uh, your favorite weapon. Oh, your favorite weapon. Yeah. So oh uh, brand new is also my number two, mm-hmm. um, and dude, like. They had a four album streak, which was just, you know, great album after great album after great, you know, uh, your favorite weapon is probably my least favorite, but, uh, you know, I appreciate it. Right. You know, um, I can see that it's probably one of my favorite. I don't um, know why, but then Deja came out and that it's probably their most consistent album. Um, and you know, probably their most important uh contribution to emo definitely um to emo yes yeah definitely. and uh then they came out with the devil and god and i was like yeah this band th- this <laughs> is this is deep and heavy and like this songs like limousine and uh, oh my god yeah we'll we'll talk about limousine in a minute for the, sure. the archer's bows are broken like mm. those songs yeah. are so good yeah. Um Daisy uh, Jesus Christ. was a lot Oh yeah, Jesus Christ is I also mean, really good. I died for you one time but never again. Oh um, yeah. Uh Daisy yeah. is also very good. It, it 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 took me a couple of listens uh for sure, but Daisy while you know that kind of came out after the emo scene had kind of died down. Um you know, great great album. Right. Um I yeah. have their uh, the new one, science, uh, science, science fiction. fiction. It's yeah, fantastic. it's pretty good. Yeah. It, it's it's um, a nice blend of a lot of their old. It, it's a lot more um, mellow. mellow. Uh, yeah, you can you can actually tell that uh, Vin took like a step back when it came to the songwriting because um, he had to focus on some other stuff, uh, mainly like not being addicted to heroin. Um, right. Which is you can heavy. hear the heroin addiction on Daisy, you, like you can, yeah, yeah, you can hear it yeah. really, really heavy, and that's when he took uh, a large. He wrote a majority of the songs on Daisy, so um, uh, we'll we'll discuss brand new a lot more in a second. Um, <laughs> all right, so we are going to get to the most controversial pick on all of the lists, especially when it comes Jeff, to Jeff. Turn off, turn off Fox's mic, especially when it comes to uh badger and myself um and who would have thought that a badger and a fox would fight about anything ever um except for everybody and food um so my number two and uh i'm going to give this a caveat and say early bright eyes uh Ah! so uh badger does not like this uh, Not, not emo. Do not Those drown. are my two words. Do, yeah. Not emo. So I didn't put them on my list because I also, I don't think they're emo. But I was just talking to my wife about this and she was like, of course they're emo. I, and my wife so, says they're emo. So like, you so, know, it, it's open to interpretation. It is open to interpretation. But Hold on. No, 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 no. You do not get to talk until I talk first. Okay. Yes, that is the exact look on your face as described by that noise. So, the reason that they ended up on my list at all is because Connor Oberst, in the beginning, this is why I added that caveat of saying early bright eyes. Can't because, even look at you. Because when you when you get into albums like uh, any like Casadega, like when you're when you're getting into the later bright eyes. Um, and and this is specifically Bright Eyes, nothing nothing else. Not Connor Oberst in the Mystic Valley Band, uh, not his newest uh, newest project. What is it uh, again, Badger? The newest project he's on. Oh, the Better Oblivion yeah. Mini Center. Yeah, yeah that, Better that's a good Better album. Oblivion. Um, it's it's not Monsters of Folk. It is specifically early Bright Eyes, and and not even uh, beyond. Uh, I'm wide awake. It's morning. Before I'm wide awake. It's morning. They are an emo band. He is an emo icon. He, yeah. He is an emo icon, specifically the first couple albums. I think he's an American icon. He is now. He is the best American songwriter. And even back then, he was more folk and punk folk in a way. Like, he has that essence that 
that uh, the noisy and uh, self-made. It's kind of it, hard to categorize. Yeah, like, it uh, is. But it, I wouldn't. I know on Wikipedia it says he's emo, but Wikipedia <laughs> anybody can go on and put that. So I'm pretty I, much. I'm Fox, pretty sure Fox did I, it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he did. I I and, give them a, a healthy stipend of my check uh, just so I can edit whatever I want. Wait, are you paying him? Are Jeff? Are you paying Fox? I'm the voice of the podcast, guys. Of course, I'm getting paid. I'm out. Uh, oh, I think I think Bright Eyes has just broken up the band. I'm leaving. See you, bitch. Not emo. Not emo. Not emo. Okay, stop. Bright Eyes, early Bright Eyes Not is emo. emo. That's all. That's it's. You can't say Wrong. anything about it. Nope. It's it's 100 fact. They early Bright Eyes is emo. Uh, that being said, like I said, any anything after wide I'm wide awake, it's it's morning, like not emo. I I will say that it's not emo. Jeff, what do you think? Jeff thinks it's emo. No, he's still messing with that printer. Oh, fucking idiot! He just can't figure it out. Yeah. All right. So now that we got the most controversial pick out of the way, we're gonna move on to the number one spot. So I am very, 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 very proud of my number one spot because it makes Darsh so mad. Okay. And because they deserve it. Um, So when I think of emo, I think of this band, and I am going to make sure Jeff calls this episode uh, the name of their first album. It's Taking Back Sunday, and they deserve it. Way to go, guys. You're number one. Emo. So the reason I have such a problem with this is because not because I don't think that they're a good band or they're not emo. It's just they're so overrated. Like, I agree. They, they're so like, uh, <clears throat> yeah, when everyone thinks of emo, they think of Taking Back Sunday. But not only because they're, uh, you know, they, they're of, of course they're emo. Like, they are but, emo. but that doesn't mean that their songs are that great or like, you know, like the definition on the web page I just made says the definition of emo is taking back Sunday, <laughs> but kind check of. your sources. <laughs> I just don't think that they are a good enough band to be in anyone's number one spot. Yeah. I don't know. I can agree. I actually agree with you on that one. Well, uh, I they do, made my but... list. They made my top five. All right, don't don't attack me. They, not, they weren't. Well, am... They weren't as high as Bright well, Eyes and, though. And like they had that uh, <sighs> feud with uh, Brand New, yeah. which I think is another reason why people uh, think that they're on the same level as Brand New, but they're not. Like they're nowhere near the... Brand New. Yeah, I know they're a little bit higher up. No, they're they're way lower than. That's why they made my top. They like they made my list. But there's no way that they made. They they also made list. Bullwinkle's list in yeah, the not, top five. Not mine. They were in my top five, but they are not in number one. So we are going to move on to Darsh's number one pick. All right, <clears throat> my number one pick is My Chemical Romance, <sighs> and uh, so I have a lot to say about this. Is it? it they're just so good, like. <laughs> So their their debut album uh is very good. Uh you know, there there are some great tracks on there like uh, Our Lady of Sorrows. Um but the two albums that preceded it or sorry, that came after uh are just probably not just going beyond emo. They're probably one of the or some of the best pop punk albums just of all time. Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge. It's just track after track of like sweet, fast, emo, uh, goth punk, you know? Yeah. And that, uh, uh, Gerard. That's top 10 on Rolling Stone's best emo bands. Gerard Way. Albums. Albums. Gerard Way is such a captivating front man. Yes. Like, and his voice is. It, it, he's not like a better singer than Burt McCracken. But I think that he has like that quality. His voice has that quality that is just like 
rock star. I know? like his eye makeup, the uh, red. mask, the raccoon. He, he mask. also had great eye makeup. He's with. he's got a flair for um, aesthetics. Yeah, and uh, uh, which I'll, helps a lot. I'll also say that the Black Parade is by far the most ambitious album that any emo act has ever attempted. Uh, and I will stand by that forever. And I think they totally pulled it off. They, like they have songs like dead. They have songs like sleep, the black parade teenagers. I, mm, I don't really like that one. That's like the hair, the hair out of me. That's yeah. like the hair in the soup yep. for me personally. <laughs> but, uh, that whole album, was that's why hair. I pulled it that's up. Why they're not on my but, list. uh, um, what was I gonna say? Uh, but I respect your choices. songs like uh, "Cancer." Like "Cancer" is a great song. They're just really good. Yeah, and, that's a good uh, album. They, the other thing is, My Chemical Romance out of nowhere will just get really heavy, which mm-hmm. I love. You know that uh, the guitar player for that band is in- incredibly talented. Yeah, the the uh, whole band is isn't uh the drummer is fantastic. I right. was uh I was trying to play along with uh, uh what was it? Helena the other day and uh my ankle got sore. Right. From the doubles. No, the, that's my favorite album to play drums, but uh I've gotten some negative reviews by a uh, by- past drummer of uh of my bands and a current drummer stay um, off the drum stay off the drum set bro but uh they just <laughs> just kidding their 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 music is so dramatic that yeah it, it just like it, it's undeniable like i like can't w- when I, I when i put them on my list like the the one of the big reasons they made my list uh almost top five they almost cracked the top five um was it, like i said gerard is an artist like he knows how to capture your eye and your ear and uh, aesthetically, uh, MCR does define the emo scene for sure. Like, One of the quintessential yeah, bands. They are definitely quintessential to to. I mean, did they make all of our lists, or did they not make your list? They didn't make my list. I'm I'm actually surprised. You're by that. you're allowed to your incorrect opinion. Yeah, yeah, so. your incorrect opinions, especially put, about Bright Eyes. I put um, from first to last above My Chemical Romance. That's an that, that's interesting insane choice. to me. Yeah, from first to last is not is there you, nowhere near as good as My Chemical Romance. That one album does not make wait. They had one album that wasn't specifically emo, and that's the Black Parade. I thought it was emo. It's it's it was a concept emo. album. It was it's, an yeah. emo concept. It's album. more emo than uh, uh, anything that from first to last put out. So, um, all I, right. So the, my number one, My Chemical Romance. You, you know, yeah, just... it makes sense. Um, all right, I'm moving on to my number one pick. It should come to nobody's like. It shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that knows me that my number one pick is brand new. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, brand new is. I thought I uh, knew you is when it comes to modern music, they are my favorite band. Um, like uh, Darsh was saying when, when he, you know, he, he put them at number two uh, and, uh, and Badger as well. Um, they are the best band to come out of this era. Um, it's specifically this scene, maybe not this era, but definitely this scene. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd say the scene definitely, because uh i mean like your favorite weapon uh lyrically defines everything that emo has to say there's uh a lot of talk of you know people getting in car crashes and dying and and uh there's a uplifting the, yeah very uplifting stuff you know not macabre warms at all. your heart totally warms my heart um and then if and your then, heart is black yeah like mine uh and then you you go on to deja and it's the like like darsh said it that is like the defining album um it's uh there's not a bad song on that album uh play crack the sky is one of my favorite songs to yeah. play on the guitar and sing um uh, without a doubt um you know uh me versus madonna versus elvis um which is jesse's ego just running fucking wild um and then you move on to devil and god and you get into some of the heaviest subject matter you will ever hear on an album limousine 
if no if you don't know what that song's about look it up um because i when i listen to it now with the context it is the saddest thing you will ever hear um and uh it actually uh that album has a my next tattoo it it comes from that album and it's uh my uh light is far too slight to hold back all my dark um fantastic turn of phrase it's um, going to be a long tattoo it, yeah. it's it's just that that specific line um so, my light is far too bright to... i agree with everything you say i think i think there needs to be a caveat in the me too era just just to point out we disavow what the accusations okay I mean, so we don't just Jess, jesse messed up and he will yeah. if you if you talk to him about it now he will freely admit that he was like an asshole like he'll tell you he yeah. was an asshole yeah him. no so just he, he putting it out it, there yeah, he's he, an uh, asshole well he, he's an asshole but he's a it's at a certain point where do you separate the art from the artist um because when it comes to his art I nobody mean, people, ever called pablo picasso an asshole I call Pablo Picasso an asshole every single time I listen so to the Counting that Jeff Crows. Guy. You're fired. I thought you were going to say every day. Just, no, just once a day. Just once a day. Fuck you, Pablo Picasso. <laughs> so. No, but uh, but but people forgive uh, Michael Jackson, and he had all sorts of accusations. Thrown alleged. A- alleged. <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. Uh, I think we're getting into some. Yeah, we're getting into some some areas. Politically... Yeah. L- let's focus on the music. But uh, uh, yeah, when it comes to the music brand new but is the that best asterisk band. there yeah that it is there but uh but yeah brand new and we're gonna go through the weighted scores so well, do you well, want to explain on, how i got it is? i got one more thing to say about uh, brand new when it comes to album progression from one album to the next there is no band that has made as big a leaps as far as like pushing boundaries in the emo scene there are bands that do this i.e radiohead you know those types of bands that that do jump that big in, in uh, from album to album. For sure, I had to add that in because Darsh is such a super fan. Um, just if you ever meet him, ask to look at his calf. Um, <laughs> so uh, that is why brand new. That's what I do when I meet anybody. Me. Yeah, can I look at your calf? I mean, you should for me. I have a Bender tattoo on my for, calf. For context, I have a Radiohead tattoo on my calf. Yes, he does. Um, but yeah, so we uh, we ended up scoring. Um, each of these lists oh. uh, to see who the number one band was and uh, how it goes is the 10 position is worth a point nine is worth two and so on and so forth to one being worth 10 points uh, so the number one band wait me- should we start with the just quickly go through no. the list from nine ten we, we'll do we'll do the top three so all right so, so number, number three. three hold on should I uh, cue yep. the drum roll Jeff Jeff He's out getting coffee or something. I don't know. Uh, there he is. Number three. My Chemical Romance. My Chemical Romance at number oh, three. Yeah, they, uh, you, so. you, you can't argue with that. Like like we said when we talked about them, they're, right. qu- they're it's quintessential uh, as far as emo music. I know it didn't make Jeff's or didn't yeah, make, yeah, didn't yeah, make yeah, Badger's yeah, 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 yeah. list and. Uh, so that anyways, Jeff guy has no taste in music. I mean, it is what it is. Man. <laughs> That's actual si- sa- uh, the sounds of him leaving. <laughs> That's what it, say. it sounds like a sad trombone. <laughs> well, but it's hard not to laugh because it's his flatulence. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it's just oh, like every time he goes and he's just like, oops. Oh, wait. He yeah. just fell. That's did, not funny. Just, okay, did he slip on I, a banana? Is he okay? Uh, hopefully he doesn't sue me. Uh, but I mean, I I'm the one who's well, making all the money. You can't off of this, sue me so. if he's dead, right? Yeah, I mean, right? I guess uh, so. Ah, oh, fuck, he's alive. And uh, <laughs> okay, we are going to move on to number two. Drum roll, please. Number two is the used. <laughs> the used. This is a band that made everyone's list. Woo-hoo! Um, you can't deny that the greatness of the used. Like, uh, they're a little bit lower on my list than everybody else's, but. Uh, they still made my list too. And these these scores also uh, include Bullwinkles. Yeah. Uh, he couldn't make it tonight, but we will post his list up 
in the comment section or on our website, probably on our website. The old ball. We're also going to post uh, the furniture that he purchased. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm hoping it's nice. It better, be a, style it better something. be a nice chase. Yeah. 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 A chaise long, perhaps. Uh, yeah. yeah. Perhaps. Or um, maybe they're going to get my uh, my godson a, a race car. A bed? race car bed? If they do, know. they better. Dude, I want to get one. I've always wanted yeah. a race car Bull, bed. I yeah. mean, you'd sleep so much faster than anybody yeah, else. I true. know. That's why I drink a bunch of coffee before I sleep, so I just go. <laughs> 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 All Is right. that what you do? <laughs> and the number Bill one. Murray. Number one. The number one emo band is. Wait. Wait. <laughs> brand, brand new. Brand new. You guys were late. You were late. You were late. Uh, You're... Let's do that again. Ready? Drum roll. <laughs> it's brand new. It's brand new. It is, it's um, brand new. You cannot deny. Uh, I know that they're number one on Bullwinkle's list, and they're number two on both of your lists. Yep. Um, like I, I mean, I can never. I could wax eloquent about brand new. They had uh, yeah thirty eight points, and they were uh twelve points. Above the used. Are they in so. everyone's uh, top two? Top two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you guys both are, are two, and the, me and Bullwinkle both had him at number Interesting. one. Oh, did he have number one? He had him at number but one. But he had the killers on his list. Yeah, his list is uh, a bit strange. Fallout Boys on there. He had Asking Alexandria. Uh, no, no, there. that was the fake one. You, uh, you have to see it. the real one. I, yeah, the real one. Does anybody still know not. that band? Post the I, link. I do. I, they're, they're, I uh, really? they're a metalcore band. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, my wife is a huge fan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen them live a couple times. They Not they, your choice. I mean, you know, they they put on a great show. Uh, do they? Yeah, Just they do. Your, your um, wife will listen to this podcast. Oh, yeah. She so. prob- she's the listener. <laughs> <laughs> right. And she has a thousand different uh, Apple podcast um, accounts. accounts, and she downloads it a thousand times. So if you yeah. guys want to be a thousand and one... You really do just it number two. Yep, and help <laughs> help us make that sweet oh, podcast. Yeah, yeah. And, and my mom's gonna subscribe, so you guys are number three. Ooh. Oh, I wait, don't I'm, think my mom. My knows mom will what, not. She doesn't know what a podcast. <laughs> no, is. No, that's why you so. go onto the phone just and be like, <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll be like, "Son, what is this stuff that keeps downloading on my phone?" You joke, hey, but that will really happen. Uh, but you know what? She's a lovely lady. Yeah, she's the best. And Dorothy Mantooth is a saint. She is this this lady is a saint. I'm not going to put her name out there, but she is a saint. Yeah, no. To name some let's, of the let's, badges. I, uh, yeah. Let's not put. Uh, yeah, let's not say her name because Mary hates it when we do that. But uh, <laughs> Mother um, Mary. But uh, but yeah. Um, you know. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, the last thing that we will leave you with is we are going to. Uh, do something at the end of each of these podcasts and uh especially specifically the top 10 list um where we cover a song by the number one slot uh slot uh so we will be covering the number one slut the number that's me um <laughs> we will be covering mixtape off of your favorite weapon by brand new so uh you know follow our uh, it'll be on our soundcloud um you can follow us on facebook uh ordeal by innocence uh, and that's, that's the and the twelve bar news on Facebook and the twelve bar news on Facebook we have that set up. Uh, so if you're listening, uh, give us a follow it and YouTube and YouTube. It does it doesn't and the seem, SoundCloud. I already mentioned the SoundCloud. Stop it. Um, it no. doesn't seem like much, um, but you know it, it it'll let us know that people are listening and enjoying it, and 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 we want feedback. We want that desperately. Uh, our egos desire it. Yeah, um, and uh, but most importantly, we do this because it's fun, and we we it's exactly we right. Like it. It, we like arguing. It's an it ex, it's an excuse for us to argue in like a civil way, yeah. where the, nobody gets kicked in the the nuts, except for Jeff. Except for Jeff, yeah, he, that but guy. That guy's a production manager. I mean, don't hurt him too bad, or at least don't hurt his right hand. He signs my checks. Yeah, Thank wait, you. and. I already, You're yeah. getting checks? I'm getting yeah, I'm getting paid for this. Uh, I told you I'm, I'm the host. I get paid for this. You guys are just like my little monkeys. That's why uh, my list is more important. That sounded racist. <laughs> and I am just going to put it out there that you are wrong about bright eyes and this is our theme. So bye. 12 Bar News podcast was recorded at 12 Years Dungeon Studios in Trenton, New Jersey. 
The sound engineer, Jeff Damon, webmaster, Daniel Marshall, resident Iowan, Mike Stanley, and your host slash delinquent, Patrick Stofflet. Thanks for tuning in. 12 years dungeon! <laughs>